Hi, we're Ellie and David, and we're overlanding across Europe and Central Asia in our Land Rover Defender, Yak. In this episode, David fights Spider-Man, and we spend time with a lovely Georgian family. We also get increasingly worried after a month of being stuck in Georgia that we won't be able to reach Central Asia, as the Azerbaijan border remains closed, and all of our efforts don't really seem to be getting us anywhere. So we've been in Tbilisi for a couple of days now, well, probably a week. So we found a nice spot. We're going to maybe just stick around here for the next week. Uh, whilst we've got this time, I'm going to change the rear brake pads because on the MOT just before we left, they said that you'll need to change them in three or four months. So I've got the Ferodo uh, brake pads and I'm just going to do that now. So this is the new pad and the old pad in comparison. So there's not a lot of wear left on that. I said you're supposed to replace them when you've got less than three mil of tread left. So that's pretty much now. So it's a good time to replace them really. I thought the other one was bad, but there are like no millimeters left on this one. So it's a good job of doing this now. We were really happy to be able to meet up again with our friend Tim, who you might remember from previous episodes. Tim invited a Georgian couple, Ilya and Lola, who he'd met a few days earlier over to our camp spot and asked David if he wanted to try some sparring. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Look at him. Good job, guys. <laughs> but if Tim was not grappling and practicing. Yeah, sure, if you are boxing, that's good, but you are not going to become like much stronger in grappling. So Tim, who's been doing judo for about 15 years, despite his injury the last two years, uh, has just taught me how to wrestle. The only experience I've had before is with my little brother James in our living room. Uh, it's hard, <laughs> really hard. Uh, very skilled, even though he's been injured. Um, it's good fun though, I can taste blood. I don't know if that's good or bad. But... <laughs> Well yeah, done, he guys. did very well. The fightings with the brother were like <laughs> New hobby? Mm. Your turn next. Mm, no thanks. Yes, this is very good. This is very good. Round two, we've got Georgia versus Germany. This is Strictly Come Dancing. What are you making for us tonight, Ali? I'm making a Thai butternut squash soup. I've kind of made it up, but <laughs> hopefully it goes all right. So Tim's just gone to pick his girlfriend up from the airport. This will probably be the last time we see him on the trip, unless we see him on the way back. But it's been really nice to get to know him and to spend some time with him. Ilya and Lola invited us over to their flat and prepared loads of traditional food for us to try. And of course, some amazing Georgian wine. They suggest that we dressed up smart, so Ellie's looking lovely. And I don't have any smart shoes with me. And a very creased shirt. So what's this? So this is very traditional meal from um, Achara, West Georgia. You've been by the next scene. Oh. Where you're from? The name is Borano. Mm -hmm. Where a uh, team is going right now. Yeah. Okay. So it's made by cheese and then you melt the butter. Uh, butter and you put um, butter on cheese. So this is like uh, 
uh, the most famous sauce in Georgia. It's made by Emali. It's a kind of plum, but wild plum, you know. And everybody use with um, potato, with meat, or with egg, or whatever. It's frequently used sauce. Do you know this? Do you make this kind of... Oh, is this the sour tomatoes? Yeah, sour tomato. So yeah. like pickled? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I think you you have some kind of this. Yeah, I Maybe think we yeah. have some yeah. similar yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and oh, okay, we eat uh, this sauce with potato a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is borana from uh, West Georgia. Okay. It's made by Where do boiled I push cheese, this thing? and then you put melted butter on it. Oh wow! Yeah, it's very famous. Maybe in front of your face. <laughs> 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 so Ilya and Lola asked us to bring something British as a surprise, so we brought some Marmite. <laughs> you might need a knife, it's quite thick. Yeah, it's coming. Wow. <laughs> Reminds me taste of like Ashleti. Ashleti? Ashleti is good. This tastes different. We don't have anything like that in Georgia. <laughs> but you like it? Yeah. Yay! So this is the cheese and butter. Mm -hmm. It smells amazing. Good? Oh. <laughs> Hailstones that are coming down now are about the size of marbles, so I hope the windscreen's alright. You can see all the hailstones on the ground. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, thanks very much for your help. Cheers, you too, bye. So I just spoke to the British Embassy in Baku uh, asking whether they know when the borders are going to open. He said uh, there's no, they don't have any information. And he said that we can check the government website. Um, we can see, we can sign up to like an email list and they'll be able to tell us when the borders are going to open. But really he just said contact the Azerbaijan embassy in Georgia or back in the UK. Um, but we've tried both of them and not really anything helpful has come of it. So I'm going to ring the migration service in Azerbaijan now and see if there's any sort of transit visa we can do to get to the port in Alat now. At this point we're obviously quite frustrated and worried because we've been in Georgia now for almost a month uh, we've not really had the money to be travelling around and seeing it all, just kind of waiting to see if the border opens, so it's just a little bit irritating but it's just I guess one of those things. We are on a fairly tight schedule because we're picking Ellie's sister up in Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan and we're on quite a small budget as well so just kind of trying to figure out what we do next if this doesn't work out. We've just been back to the Azerbaijan border to see if we can get any more information about when they um, might let us through. Um, we spoke to a couple of um, different customs officers. Um, one of them was really helpful, tried to think of some solutions for us. He seemed to think the best option for us was um, contacting the Azerbaijan embassy and asking about a transit permit, which we didn't know existed. So I think that's definitely worth us trying next. Um, because it's getting a little bit late now and we are starting to worry a bit about getting to my sister on time and just our schedule in general. After talking to these guys, we then left. We said, right, let's go find somewhere where we can just chat and look at our options. It's Sunday today, so none of the embassies are open. So I started driving up this hill and I saw a big off-road hill and I thought, I want to drive up that. I started driving up it and then he said, uh, David, I think that's a watchtower over there. So I had a little look and there was a guy at the top of this watchtower with a gun kind of shouting at us and I panicked a little bit and I just said, I'm just going to turn around, I'm just going to turn around. And he was like yelling at us, no, you can't drive any further because obviously we were quite close to the border. Uh, so I started reversing back, got off the hill, said, all right, let's go elsewhere. And as we were driving away about a minute later I looked behind and saw a border police car pulling up behind us I thought, oh no what have I done um, 
and they flashed us and honked us and I was like right okay he wants me to pull over so I pulled over and kind of got out of the car and I translated on my phone I was like we didn't know we were supposed to be we weren't supposed to be there I'm really sorry we're just trying to off road um but he didn't look at the phone just didn't give a chance give me a chance he just asked for a passport so Ellie got me my passport he kind of looked at it uh, picked up his walkie talkie and then kind of just gave it back to me smiled and said ciao and I was like okay (laughs) so uh, that was a bit scary At this point, we were feeling a bit exhausted as we were sure we'd tried everything after hours of phone calls and lots of embassy visits over nearly a month. We knew this was all part of overlanding and we should be open to changing our plans, but at the same time, we'd been saving up and dreaming of getting to Central Asia for years, so we couldn't help but feel really disappointed as our money and time were running out. So we got to the embassy in Tbilisi yesterday um, and there was a note on the door saying they're closed for Ramadan for two days. So we weren't able to go in and ask about this um, transit permit, which is frustrating, but we're going to try again tomorrow. Um, We weren't actually expecting to get through yesterday through the border because our visa is only valid from um, the 4th. So we thought we'd just go and try and see if we can get some more information. Um, So yeah, try again tomorrow. Because all we want to do is obviously drive the six hours that it takes to get to the ferry port. We don't actually want to visit Azerbaijan, we just want to get through it. Like, you know, we want to drive six hours and then we'll get the ferry to Kazakhstan. Yes, yeah, I think that's the one we emailed. Yeah. But whether you you have an easier way to contact them for us, I don't know. Um, So we're driving to Kazakhstan and we need to transit through. They said the borders are closed, but we can talk to you about getting permission to travel to Kazakhstan. We obviously only filmed a fraction of the phone calls we were making up to 30 times a day over two weeks. Quite often it would take a whole day to get through to someone who would then immediately hang up when they didn't understand us. We're going to go for a walk now um, to see the Chronicle of Georgia, which looks kind of like a big Stonehenge up on the hill above the lake. Um, It's not too far, I think it's about a mile and a half, so it'll be good to have a bit of exercise. I'm just so excited to be on the road again. 